In this, you're descending through a golden haze. The light is dim, distorted as if the sky itself were burning. Your ship rattles, metal groaning under invisible hands. A faint orange glow pulses beneath the clouds, an endless sea of fire and acid. And then with a final shudder, you break through the clouds. You've landed on Venus. At first, it feels impossible. You can't see the sun. The world around you is drowned in sulfurous fog. The air glows faintly yellow, dense, thick, almost solid. The sky presses down with a weight you can't imagine. So heavy it could crush steel like paper. The ground beneath you looks like stone, but it's not like any rock you've ever known. It's warped, cracked, shimmering with heat. This is not just another planet. This is hell made real. But let's step back. What would really happen if you landed on Venus? What would it feel like second by second? And how long could you survive in one of the most hostile environments in the universe? Venus, the twin of Earth, same size, same mass, same position in the solar system's delicate dance, and yet, something went terribly, irreversibly wrong. Billions of years ago, Venus may have looked like home, a blue world with oceans, clouds, maybe even the potential for life. But that promise burned away, literally. Now it's a planet where physics and chemistry conspire against you, where the rules of survival collapse under pressure, your descent begins at the edge of its thick, toxic atmosphere. You look down and all you see is cloud, layer upon layer of swirling yellow. These clouds are made not of water, but sulfuric acid. Each droplet burns on contact. Even spacecraft that tried to peer through were corroded within hours. As you descend, the temperature begins to rise. 100 degree at our C, 200 degree at our C, 300 degree at our C. The pressure climbs too, twice that of a submarine's hull at depth. 10 times, 50. At 50 kilometers above the surface, the air around you glows like molten gold. At 30 kilometers, your instruments begin to fail. The heat eats through metal. The pressure crushes your sensors. Your cooling systems scream. By the time you reach the surface, the temperature has risen to 475 degree, hot enough to melt lead. The pressure, 92 times Earth's. That's the same as being nearly a kilometer underwater. If you were standing there unprotected, your body would collapse in seconds. Your lungs couldn't inflate. Your blood would boil, then be crushed back into you. But what if, somehow, you were inside a perfectly sealed suit, strong enough to resist the pressure? You'd still be in trouble. The suit would have to withstand constant bombardment from acid droplets. Its cooling system would need to fight against a heat that never stops. Even the most advanced materials known to us would begin to degrade. Electronics would fail. Batteries would overheat. Nothing we've ever built could survive for long. In fact, the longest any machine has lasted on Venus was 127 minutes. That was the Soviet Venera 13 probe, launched in 1981. It landed, transmitted a few ghostly images of a cracked orange landscape, and then it died. Crushed, cooked, dissolved. But let's imagine you endure it. You step out onto the surface. You see rocks twisted and blistered by heat. The ground is baked into a mosaic of volcanic plains. The air shimmers so thickly that the horizon seems to ripple and twist. You could stretch out your hand and feel the pressure pressing back. You could barely move. Each step would feel like walking through syrup. Above you, the sky burns orange, not blue. The sun is only a faint ember. It's light diffused and lost in the haze. And as you stand there surrounded by eternal storm, you'd realize something eerie. Venus is silent. There's no wind at the surface. The air moves slowly, suffocated by its own weight. Sound barely travels. You'd speak, but no one would hear. Venus rotates backwards. Its day is longer than its year. One day on Venus lasts 243 Earth days. That means the sun would rise, move sluggishly across the sky and set again after eight months. But because of the thick atmosphere, you'd never really see the sunrise. Just a slow perpetual twilight. What makes Venus this way? It's a story of runaway power, of a world that fell victim to its own heat. Long ago, sunlight began to warm Venus's surface. Oceans, if they ever existed, began to evaporate. Water vapor, a greenhouse gas, trapped more heat. The hotter the planet became, the faster the water boiled away. Eventually, the oceans vanished. Without water, carbon dioxide from the rocks couldn't be absorbed or recycled. It built up layer upon layer until the air itself became poison. 
Venus cooked itself from within. A runaway greenhouse effect. Unstoppable. Irreversible. Today its atmosphere is made of over 96% carbon dioxide. The rest? Nitrogen, sulfur dioxide, and traces of deadly acid. Lightning rips through its clouds constantly, illuminating the endless storm. Volcanoes may still erupt beneath the haze, spewing molten rock into the already scorching air. It is a planet still alive, but violently so. If we compare it to Earth, the contrast is haunting. Our planet maintains a fragile balance, a thermostat controlled by oceans, clouds, and life. But if that balance tipped, if greenhouse gases reached Venusian levels, Earth too could become a furnace. Venus then is not just a planet. It's a warning, a mirror held up to our future but back to our landing. Let's walk through what would happen, moment by moment. You break through the upper atmosphere. The heat shield glows white. Air friction becomes plasma. At 70 kilometers up, you're surrounded by acid clouds. The view is surreal. Bright yellow streaks stretching for thousands of kilometers. At 50 kilometers, you enter what some call the habitable zone of Venus here. The temperature and pressure are surprisingly Earth-like. Scientists have even speculated that floating colonies could exist here one day. Massive airships drifting through the clouds, shielded from the surface below. But for now, you're still descending. The temperature climbs to 200 degrees. Your instruments begin to buckle. At 30 kilometers, the pressure crushes down. The world below is hidden in haze, but you can feel it. An oppressive presence waiting. Then through the clouds, you see it. A dim, orange glow. The surface impact dust and gas erupt you've landed outside. It's hotter than any oven. The light is strange, diffuse, heavy, almost metallic. Your sensors detect sulfur compounds, carbon dioxide, and traces of chlorine. The suit's cooling system strains to maintain temperature. Condensed acid begins to form on its outer shell. Within minutes, circuits start to fail. Displays flicker. Your oxygen supply under immense pressure begins to leak. And then the realization sets in. You cannot leave. There's no way back through this inferno. You have in every sense arrived at the end of survivability. If we could look around without dying, what would we see? A landscape of volcanic plains and towering mountains. Massive. Fissures cut across the planet's crust. Proof of a surface reshaped by fire. Venus has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system over 2600 identified. Some may still erupt today, feeding the thick atmosphere with even more carbon dioxide. There are no oceans, no rivers, no wind to sculpt the terrain, just stillness and heat. Over time, even the strongest probe would melt. Aluminum would soften. Steel would warp. Circuit boards would disintegrate. The ground itself could swallow the remains, fusing them into the rock like fossils of human ambition. Scientists often say that studying Venus helps us understand Earth's destiny. Venus shows us what happens when a planet loses. Balance when feedback loops spiral beyond control. Its clouds, its heat, its silence, they are echoes of a world that once might have been like ours. It is both alien and familiar, beautiful and terrifying. Imagine if millions of years ago an intelligent species lived there, creatures who watched their skies darken, who saw their oceans boil away. If they ever existed, they were erased completely. No trace remains, only heat and pressure, only silence. And yet, there is hope buried in that hell. Because Venus teaches us resilience. Every mission sent there, every probe crushed by its air, pushes the limits of what humanity can do. We've built machines to endure conditions we ourselves never could. One day, we may return. We may float above the acid clouds, studying the planet from a safe distance, peering down into its golden inferno. Perhaps we'll find secrets locked beneath the haze. Clues to how worlds live, die and maybe begin again. But for now, the question remains, what if you truly stood there? What would you see? What would you feel? In your final seconds on the most hostile surface in the solar system, would it feel like the end of everything or the beginning of understanding?